My project is titled Flavonoid C glycosides as leads against protein tyrosine phosphatase 1B as a druggable target in type 2 diabetes therapy. PTP1B is a validated therapeutic target for the management of type 2 diabetes due to its function as a negative regulator of the insulin signaling pathway, as it directly interacts with the insulin receptor or the insulin receptor substrate to dephosphorylate phosphotyrosine residues, resulting in the attenuation of the insulin signal. Furthermore, knockout studies have also emphasized the role of the enzyme as a modulator of, the in of insulin sensitivity. However, there still is a lack of a clinically approved inhibitor, and therefore the search has extended toward plant-derived compounds due to their relatively less toxicity profile. One such compound are flavonoid C-glycosides, whom have additionally drawn attention for its anti-diabetic potential. However, the mechanism of action remains unknown, and therefore this study investigated the inhibitory potential of flavonoid C-glycosides against PTP1B. This slide illustrates the methods employed to conduct the study, the first to be in silico assays and the last being an in vitro inhibitory assay. The results from the molecular docking study is tabulated in Table 1 that ranks the flavonoids in terms of their affinity for the protein via the provision of a negative binding score. The more negative the score, the better the affinity of the ligand for the protein. Out of the seven flavonoids that are docked at the binding pocket of the protein, three highlighted in red had the best affinity for the protein relative to that of the standard. The three compounds are then subjected to molecular dynamic simulation to evaluate the behavior of the protein upon binding of the ligand. The binding free energy was thus calculated for the complexes, which has a similar principle to that of the molecular docking study. The more negative the binding free energy, the better the affinity of the ligand for the protein. Among the flavonoids, orientin appears to have a marginally more negative binding free energy than the latter two compounds. This indicates that this compound perhaps has a better affinity for the protein than the latter two. However, the binding free energy is not enough information to deduce which compound is best against the enzyme, and therefore further behavioral changes and interactions are evaluated. The root mean square deviation, an indicator of protein ligand complex stability, was evaluated. The average RMSD value at low va values indicate a more stable complex, and therefore from this we can see that the compounds are competing favorably with that of the standard. This trend can be observed by radius of gyration, which is an indicator of the level of compactness of the complex system. Similar to RMSD, at low, low ROG values indicate a more compact system. Furthermore, from this analysis, we can deduce that no unfavorable changes such as protein unfolding occurred. Root mean square fluctuation provides further conformational information in terms of flexibility and fluctuations of the complexes. Similar to RMS in ROG, low RMS values indicate less fluctuations, which indicates a more stable complex. When we look at the graph, we can see that the standard fluctuated way beyond the norms, whereas the flavonoids upon binding to the protein appear to have less fluctuations. With reference to catalytically important sites, which is the active site circled in purple, and the WPD loop circled in red, which is important for the catalytic activity of the enzyme, both these regions appear to have less fluctuations upon binding of the flavonoids compared to that of the stand. This itself provides the flavonoids with leverages better inhibitors against the protein than that of the standard. Interactions after MDS was also studied, and among all four compounds, majority of the interactions appear to be found in raw forces. However, I want to focus on the hydrogen bonds, which are one of the strongest intermolecular interactions between protein ligand complexes. Among orientin and acylic acid, it can be seen that major about 30% of the interactions is attributed to the hydrogen bonds, while vitaxin and aptin reported a significantly less degree of hydrogen bonds. The implication of more hydrogen bonds is that the compound would be a better inhibitor, as the inhibitor would have a high residence time at the catalytic region, resulting in enhanced inhibitory activity. So thus far, based on the marginally more negative binding free energy, the favorable behavioral changes, as well as the quality of intermolecular interactions after MDS, orientin was selected as the best compound against PTP1B in silico, and then proceeded to in vitro analysis. The half maximal inhibitory concentration, which is the IC50 value, was calculated for the compounds, and the results obtained was in line with the study by Hihan et al., in which the most potent compound had an IC50 value, which is statistically the same, but marginally higher than that of the standard. And therefore, within the parameters of this study, oriented shows potential inhibitory activity in vitro relative to that of the standard. In conclusion, 
based off the findings of the in silico study oriented and selected as the best compound against PTB1B. Subsequently, upon in vitro analysis, the result obtained was in agreement with that of the in silico study. Put together, the findings are suggestive that orienting the potential PTB1B inhibitor can be further explored as a therapeutic agent in the management of type 2 diabetes. Thank you.